Good morning, Chavez County. It's Tamara Schubert, your family and consumer science agent for Chavez County Cooperative Extension Service. This month, we're going to be talking all about our clothes and how to get the most out of them. And that starts right here in the laundry room. So stay tuned each week for a new topic. This week, we're going to learn how to make our own laundry soap at the end of the segment. So make sure you stay tuned. It is November, and we are busting out those warmer clothes. It is misting outside, so hopefully you're ready for the cooler weather. Let's talk about machines first, and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty of how our clothes get clean. So three basic machines on the market right now. Our traditional top load has the big agitator. Most of us are familiar with these. These are the ones that we grew up with. They are the least expensive to purchase right off the bat, but they also use the most water of any machine on the market. So it may be in the long run, not as cost as effective. The second model is also a top load. It has an inverter instead of an agitator, which leaves more room in your wash basket for clothes. It also uses less water and it extracts more water during the, the rinse cycle and the drain cycle. So it actually takes less time to dry your clothes and it takes less energy to operate your washing machine. The last brand on the market is your front load washers. They're high efficiency. They're probably the most expensive on the market right now, but in the long run, they're probably the most cost effective. They spin faster, they use less water, they use less energy, and that also cuts down on your drying time. If you're in the market for a new washing machine, fall is a great time to purchase. So usually in the fall months, our manufacturers are coming out with new models, and that means that our stores are looking to get rid of the models that are on their floor. So if you're looking for a washing machine, now's a great time to buy. You can also check out holiday weekends, those are great. Let's talk about what we can put in our washing machine. So the load and the size that we put in our washing machine is very important. So each of the washing machines, they wash clothes in a different way. So my agitator rubs against my clothes to get the clothes clean. And the top load inverters, they the clothes rub against each other to get themselves clean. And then the front loads, they use gravity to cycle the water through the clothes to get the clothes clean. So it's very important that we have enough room in our wash baskets for our clothes to go around and around and around. So if we're using jeans, this may mean that you can only wash two or three jeans at a time. So the best policy or the best trick that I know of is to fill your wash basket with jeans and then take two pairs out. That's going to be about the right level. Denim is heavier than a lot of fabric, so it needs more room to move. In our modern fabrics that we find in a lot of our clothes, same thing. It needs more room to move around. So make sure you don't overfill your wash basket. Now in a lot of washing machines, especially the new ones, they have a water sensor. So they'll sense how much clothes you have in there and they'll put in the right amount of water. Just make sure not to overload it. In my traditional top load machines, you can't. You have to select the proper water level. So be careful when you're using these and be careful when you're loading your machines. Now in these top load washers, even with the high efficient ones, you can use the powder or the liquid as long as it's appropriate for your machine. If you're using powder in these top loads, make sure that you put your powder in first. Fill the wash basket with three or four inches of water to make sure to dissolve that powder. It'll avoid your detergent burns on your clothes, and nobody wants that. We want our clothes to last for a little while. It's easier on our budgets. The top load, the high efficiency top loads and the front loads, they come with little pockets or drawers where you can put your fabric softener and your um, detergent, things like that. So you don't have to pre-do those. You can add everything at the beginning and then they'll automatically dispense when they're supposed to. So we talked about the water level. Let's talk about the water temperature. So the water temperature for our clothes is very important. And you'll see on every clothes, they have a label. Mine's on my side somewhere right here. They have a label on how to wash your clothes. And we'll put in a label here in a little bit in the video so that you understand what the symbols are on these clothes. So this particular shirt says that it has to be washed in cold water. So our water temperatures have a lot to do with how our clothes get clean. So if you're using hot water, those are things that are heavily soiled. I, you know, I wash my husband's work jeans in hot water just because it soaks that soil out of them. 
They kill more germs than, than colder water as well, but they can fade the colors in your clothes and it tends to cause more wrinkling. And if you're like me, I don't necessarily like to iron when it gets out of the dryer. So hot water will get dirty clothes cleaner, but it also will fade your clothes and wrinkle them a little bit more. So warm water. Warm water is great for lightly soiled clothes. I like to wash my t-shirts and my everyday kind of shirts in those. Lightly soiled clothes, warm water. It doesn't kill germs unless a, a sanitizer is added to it. So if you're looking to kill your germs, you're going to have to add something else to it to get it to get clean and sanitized. But the positive side of warm water is it's safe for almost any color of clothes. Your cold water requires a cold water detergent in order to get your clothes clean. So be careful when you go shopping at the store and looking at your detergents, which ones you want. It requires a lot more detergent to get clothes clean in cold water than it does in warm water in hot water. So if you're looking to save money on your budget, watch that aspect as you shop for your detergents. It does not kill germs. It does not disinfect and it does not sanitize unless a disinfectant is added to cold water. The only one that's going to sanitize for you or disinfect for you is your hot water settings. But be sure to check those labels to make sure you don't fade your clothes. We want them to last for a little while. Cold water is great for delicate fabrics. So let's talk about detergents that we use. So there's a lot on the market today, and there's a lot of difference between detergent and soap, and it kind of depends on where you live as to what you want to use. Your detergents are made from synthetic chemicals. So if you're looking for something that's more all natural, you're going to find that in your soaps. But hang on, there's some downsides to those. Your detergents are made from chemicals, but they're also more versatile. The soaps are made from more natural ingredients like oils, lyes, and fats, they're easier on the skin and the environment, but it's a lot harder to get your clothes clean with a soap versus a detergent. Most areas in New Mexico have hard water, so use a detergent rather than soap. Hard, hard water on your soap won't get your clothes clean. It'll leave a soap scum. Now, if you have a water softener, that's a little different. You can go either or, but check those things out before you spend a lot of money on your detergents. All-purpose, heavy-duty detergents are great at cleaning most clothes. You have your liquids, you have your powders, you have your little gel packs. There's lots on the market. Find one that works for you. So when washing, some people like a lot of suds in their washing machine because it feels like it gets them cleaner. But use caution. Too many suds in your washing machine can damage your washing machine. It also makes it hard to rinse your clothes completely and get your soap completely out, which affects the color of your clothes in the long run. So make sure that you're reading the package, checking your water level, and making sure that you add the proper amount of detergent to your washing machine. Now that we talked about the basics, let's talk about sorting our clothes for the washer. Make sure you check those tags. This tag says it has to be washed in cold water. So we want to make sure that we're throwing those in the pile that can be washed in cold water. Anything that is brand new, jeans, shirts, anything that's brand new, you want to check those for a color run. Most often, they're going to run when you do your first wash. So you may want to wash all those clothes separately the first time they go through the washer to avoid that, that color stain on all your other clothes. To keep your clothes bright, wash your whites with your whites. Don't mix your whites in with your other colors because they get a little bit of, of seepage from time to time. Do not wash your lightly soiled clothes with your heavily soiled clothes. Heavily soiled goes with heavily soiled. Light soiled goes with light soiled. Sort your clothes that shed lint and wash them separately. So don't wash your sweaters with your t-shirts. Separate, separate your clothes from your sturdy ones and your delicate ones. I like to wash my jeans with my jeans and my delicates with my delicates, my shirts with my shirts. That way they wear the same in the washing machine. If your clothes have zippers, 
hooks and eyes, anything like that, make sure that those are closed. Those tend to break and snag on other items, which can snag the rest of your clothes or ruin the clothes, and we don't want to do that. So make sure those items that are used to close your materials are closed when you put them in the washing. Check all your clothes for stains. Those stains need to be pre-treated before they go in the washing machine. And we'll have a whole segment later on this month on stains, how to determine, determine them, sorry, and what to use to get them out. Stay tuned. We're going to relocate to the kitchen, and we're going to talk today about making our own laundry soap. So we are back in the kitchen. We're going to talk about making our own homemade laundry soap. So laundry soap at home is a great way to save on your budget. Detergents get a little expensive over time, but if you're just wanting something all natural, something to do at home, this is a great solution. So this recipe calls for only four things. 16 cups of water, you can split that in two. Eight cups boiling and eight cups at room temperature. You're going to look for your washing soda. Now, washing soda, you will want to wear gloves when you handle this. Washing soda can be hard to find, but it's usually easily accessible on the internet. But if you're having a hard time finding it, baking soda can be made into washing soda. You're going to spread that out on a cookie sheet, put it in the oven at a high temperature, cook it for about 30 minutes, and it removes those other compounds and make it a washing soda. You are going to want borax. It's a cup of borax. This is usually easily found at Walmart or any of those good stations. And then you're going to want casserole soap. Now, kind of tip trick, you're going to find recipes that call for bar soap, and you're going to find some that call for liquid soap. Remember in our discussion earlier, liquid soap is going to get easier on your clothes and come out easier than your bar soap. So take that into consideration when making your soap at home. So what you're gonna do is you need a pitcher or a jug, whatever you're gonna store it in. You want one cup of your washing soda and one cup of your borax. You can go ahead and measure those out. Put those in your bucket while your water is boiling. Once your water is boiling, you're gonna go ahead and put that into your bucket with your borax and your washing soda that's already in there and then your one cup of casserole soap. You're gonna want to mix those up really good, dissolve all those powders. Once those are mixed and dissolved really well, you can go ahead and add your other eight cups of room temperature water. Now, these store for a little while. Sometimes they'll congeal, sometimes they will stay in a liquid form. It just depends on the humidity in your area. But one fourth of a cup of this to a load of laundry should get your clothes great. If you want to add a fragrance, essential oils are great for that. Just do it when you're mixing up your other ingredients. Hopefully you learned something today. Have a great day.